The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air! Well, praise God, the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week as we get into the Word of God. We're going to be talking about a lot of, of exciting things from the Word of God this week. Before we do, though, I want to make a few quick announcements to get all my notes in order here on my screen. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you may notice my eyes cut away to the screen every so often, and that's because I'm getting myself all organized here. Uh, what I want to talk about this week is exciting. It's something I think you're going to be, uh, uh, it really, it's something that every time I read it, every time I go over it, every time I meditate on it, I'm just so excited about the Word of God in this particular area that I can understand why a friend of mine named his church Psalm 91 Church, which is what we're going to talk about, Psalm 91. So go get your Bible. Look up Psalm 91, turn there, and we're going to talk about it here in just a minute. Before I do, though, I want to talk a little bit about Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org, as you can see right there on the screen. Go to Word of Faith Radio, listen every day, every day, Monday through Friday, as well as Saturday and Sunday, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. Word of Faith Radio is teaching, preaching, and playing even Word of Faith music all day and night long. Praise God. That's exciting. Now, the reason I bring it up particularly this week is because there have been some changes on Word of Faith Radio, some schedule changes and additions. Creflo Dollar is now on Word of Faith Radio. And there's a lot of new programs coming. There are ministers that are contacting uh, both, both Brother Harold and myself, and I've been directing them to Brother Harold. Matter of fact, let me just mention this. If you are a minister that preaches the uncompromising Word of Faith, if you don't, you don't want to be on Word of Faith Radio. <laughs> but if you are a minister that teaches the uncompromising Word of Faith and you want to be on Word of Faith Radio, contact Brother Harold, and his address is Harold at WOFR.org. I'll put it right here on the screen so you can see it. And I would encourage you to get in touch with Harold Cagle at, at Word of Faith Radio, and he will help you get a time and get set up and so forth. I just handle the technical end of things, okay? I, I, that's all I'm involved in is making sure that the server is working and the feed is working and all that kind of stuff, software and all that's going on. Brother Harold's the one that programs the station, is the uh, founder and president of Word of Faith Broadcasting, and is the visionary behind the ministry. And I really appreciate Brother Harold and Sister Peggy Cagle for all the great work they're doing, tireless work they're doing, uh, that getting the Word of God out through Word of Faith Radio. Amen. I tell you. And, and do this for me. Keep them in your prayers because... They are at the, the cutting edge of ministry through Word of Faith Broadcasting. So they need your prayers. They need your financial support. If you'd like to support Word of Faith Broadcasting, you can go to WOFR.org. Scroll down the right-hand side of the page, and there's a Donate button there. You can donate to the ministry. I just encourage you to be a partner with what they're doing. Just tremendous Tremendous people of God. Amen. All right, let's get into the Word of God today from Psalms 91. Praise God. This scripture, oh, it just ministers to me. Every time I get into it, I get excited. <laughs> so bear with me as we get into this today. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, whoo, hallelujah, <laughs> my God, in him will I trust. Now, you know, in these days particularly, with everything that's going on in the financial realm, and everything that's going on in the political and social realms, isn't it great that we can look to God and say, in him do I trust. 
I don't have to trust in the social system. I don't have to trust in the world. I don't have to trust in the political system. Oh, my goodness. Or the financial system. All of those will let you down every single time. But I trust in the Lord. My God. Woo, my God. See, make it personal. That's what this psalm is doing here. He is my fortress. He is my refuge. He is my God. In him will I trust. Amen. And if you trust in the Lord, then you will be blessed in everything that you do. You will live in the capital T, blessing capital B. Amen. The blessing. Let's keep reading. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Now the snare of the fowler, that is referring to someone who entraps or catches creatures like fowl, birds, and they had snares that would, that would capture those birds by the legs and hold them captured or trapped. Here it says, He will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. Now what's his truth? His truth is, of course, truth. But Jesus said, Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So I like to look at it this Every time I see the word truth, and in reference to God's truth, I like to just think about the word word there. So, his word shall be my shield and my buckler. Now that's really amazingly appropriate when you think about the fact that the word of God is a shield the, and the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So it's both your defensive and your offensive weapon against the fowler who in this case is the devil. The devil and satanic forces that might try to come against you, God his truth, his word, is both your offensive weapon and your defensive weapon against the snare of the fowler. But look what it says. He shall deliver thee out of the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Now that's a very descriptive term that talks about a mother hen. Have you ever seen a mother hen gather up her little chicks under her feathers, under her wings, and protect them? If you've ever seen that happen in, in real life, and I have, it's an amazing thing because they just disappear under there. You know, she just, whew, they surrounds them and covers them. And from their perspective, they are completely safe. Now you might say, well, that hen's not much protection. <laughs> you know, if there was some fox or animal that was coming out to get them. But you know what? A chicken's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about God will cover thee with his feathers. He's using a descriptive picture that these folks had seen before of a hen covering her chicks with her wings, with her feathers, and that being a protective thing. Now comparing it to him, to God covering you with his feathers? Oh my goodness. Now he can protect you from anything whether it's a fox, whether it's a wild animal, whether it's the fowler of Satan, whoever it might be, whatever it might be, shall anything be able to get to us? No, no. We're talking God here. And it always reminds me of the story that I've heard before, and you probably have too, if you've heard any kind of word of faith teaching for any length of time, about the lady who heard this kind of message preached by her pastor at her church, and she heard about how God covers you with his feathers and he protects you and he surrounds you. And that stuck in her mind. And so she she got in, started to her car one day, and right before she got in her car, a guy kind of jumped toward her and, and pulled a gun and was threatening her. And she thought, i got to do something, got to do something. And in that moment of panic, she thought, I'm covered with feathers. I'm covered with feathers. I'm covered with feathers. And she started yelling that. And the guy looked at her like, this lady's crazy, and ran off. 
<laughs> well, she was covered with feathers. She was supernaturally protected by God. She heard the word concerning supernatural protection. Then she put her faith in it and she confessed, I'm covered with feathers. I'm protected by the Lord. I'm surrounded by his divine protection. Amen. So every time I read this scripture, I think about the lady said, I'm covered with feathers. I'm covered with feathers. <laughs> and under his wings shalt thou trust. Whew. We can trust in that supernatural divine protection. His truth, his word, shall be thy shield. Remember, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day. We're protected in the night, we're protected in the day, we're protected at all times. And we do not need to be afraid. We don't operate in fear. Remember, fear and faith are reciprocal. So we don't operate in fear, we operate in faith, praise God. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Woo, hallelujah. No matter what's happening, a thousand can fall by your side, killed in battle. Ten thousand fall at your right hand, destroyed in battle, but it shall not come nigh thee. Won't even get close to you. Woo, praise God, that's great stuff. Only, verse 8, only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and, and see the reward of the wicked. Now there's a lot of people doing a lot of terrible things. But you know what? The reward for those terrible things will come, but you'll only see it. You won't be part of it because you are redeemed from those things. You're redeemed from the reward of the wicked. Amen? Because, here's why, verse 9, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High. Woo, he's the Most High. Amen. Thy habitation. You're dwelling in him. You are in Christ, in him. Woo, those in him realities, they just keep coming out. Good stuff. Praise the Lord. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There, now, listen to verse 10. Grab a hold of verse 10. Ooh, praise God. For there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now I'm going to have to dig into the Hebrew here because when you see this, you're going to have a shouting fit. Amen. There shall no evil befall thee, neither any plague. The word plague here is the Hebrew word nega. Nega. It's transliterated N-E-G-A, pronounced nega. Where do we get the word negative from? From this word, nega. It means a blow, figuratively an infliction, also by implication a spot, concretely a leprous person or dress. It can mean a plague, a sore, a stripe, a stroke, or a wound. Basically, it's anything negative. That's the way I like to look at this. Anything negative in your life, anything that is a reproach, anything that's a spot, anything that's a problem, any plague that may try to come nigh your dwelling. Leprosy might be, obviously is included because that's specifically what it uh, can be translated in reference to, obviously. But any negative thing, nega, any negative thing, Cannot come nigh thy dwelling. Okay. Come nigh means to approach. Bring near. This is kalrab in the Hebrew. Bring near to or for whatever purpose. To cause to approach. To cause to bring forth. To cause to come near. You can see what it's saying here. It cannot come nigh or approach your, here it is, dwelling. That's the Hebrew word ohil. It means a tent, as clearly conspicuously from a distance. In other words, the distance you see a tent, it's a tent or a covering or a tabernacle or where you live. 
Now, you say, well, dwelling, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Well, okay, but what's your dwelling? I live in a house. Matter of fact, I'm right here in my office, right here at the house now. But I also live in a body. It's also my dwelling. I am a spirit. I have a soul, my will and emotions. I live in a physical body. My body's my dwelling. Well, guess what? Nothing negative can come nigh my dwelling. No sickness and disease can come nigh my dwelling. No leprosy can come nigh my dwelling. No cancer can come nigh my dwelling. Nothing negative, nothing negative can come nigh my dwelling. Every organ, every cell of my body functions perfectly just as God intends it to function. Praise God. I live in divine health because Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases and by his stripes we were healed. If I was healed, then I am healed and nothing shall come nigh my dwelling. Praise God. Doesn't that just get you charged up? It does me. Amen. Nothing negative can come by your home. Nothing negative can come by your uh, your body. Wherever you dwell. You know what? I When I work at the High Point Regional Hospital where I work, I dwell there as well. Nothing negative can come by my dwelling there. I've said many times before, the businesses where we as believers work are blessed because we're there, praise God. The blessing just extends from us to wherever we are. Amen. you got to get a hold of some of this, praise God, because it will just get you into a shouting fit. All right. No evil shall befall thee, verse 10, neither shall any plague come now thy dwelling, for God shall give his angels charge over thee. Now I like to think about this. God has given his angelic host, his army of angels, charge over me. They're to protect me. They're to surround me. They're to be my armed guard wherever I go. They have charge over me and my house and my family. They have charge over us. We are protected supernaturally. I can't begin to tell you the number of times that I have had angelic protection. I mean, all the way back to when I was a little kid. There was a time when I was a little kid. This comes to mind every time I think about angelic protection. I was playing in a sandbox, and there were two other kids there in the sandbox with me, and there was a lady that parked her car at the top of the hill behind us, didn't set the parking brake, this is back a long time ago, back before they had the kind of cars we have now that will lock up, you know, when you get out of them and put them in park. Well, this was a straight shift type car, and without the parking brake, it didn't have anything to keep it from rolling. It began to roll down that hill. We had our backs to the car, and we didn't see it. And so as the car started down the hill, there was nothing to warn us. The engine wasn't on, it was just rolling. And we were playing, we were involved, you know, we were just little kids, little bitty kids, five, six years old. Next thing I know, I'm 20 feet or so from where I was sitting. I was sitting in the sandbox. I'm 20 feet or so away from that position, standing up, looking back at the sandbox. In an instant of time, do not know to this day, don't remember how it happened, but I do know that an angel picked me up and moved me 20 feet to get me out of the way of that car. The car came on down the hill, unfortunately struck one of the other kids and killed one of the other kids and rolled them down the hill. And it was a terrible, terrible tragedy. These were neighbors of ours. The other one was injured, but not severely, not seriously. But I was plucked out of that situation and set over to the side supernaturally by the power of God and by his angelic forces which surrounded me. You say, well, Dr. Bill, why didn't they protect the other kids? I don't know. That's what something maybe you'll have to ask the Lord one day in heaven. But I tell you what, here's the thing about that. I can't say positively for sure, but I will say this. Parents, you need to speak the word over your kids. You need to stand on this scripture that says God's given his angels charge over us and supernatural protection is ours. 
because my suspicion, I do not know this, but my suspicion is that the parents of those kids, this was a brother and sister that were playing in the sandbox with me, weren't speaking the word over their kids, weren't holding on to the word concerning supernatural protection. But you know what? My parents were Christians, spoke the word as best they knew. You know, they're Baptists, you know, praise the Lord, hallelujah. They didn't know about all the things we know about. Uh, they probably didn't meditate on Psalm 91 and know about divine protection. But they believed in prayer and they believed in God's protection, generally speaking. And the other thing I believe, and it's just me, <laughs> okay, I also believe God had a call on my life. He had some things he wanted me to accomplish. And those angels supernaturally protected me, praise God. The bottom line is, deliverance, supernatural protection is yours because God gives his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands. That's exactly what they did for me. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And I could put it this way, lest I dash my head against the bumper of that car as it came down the, the hill toward us. Praise God, they shall bear thee up. I can see those angels picking me up as a little five, six-year-old kid and transporting me supernaturally 20 feet away. Because I'm telling you, I went back shortly after that. I mean, I was just a kid, but I knew. I knew something had happened. I didn't remember it, but I knew that I had been sitting, and the next moment I'm standing up looking back at the sandbox. Now, that just doesn't happen. Okay, and I didn't leap with some kind of superpower to get out of the way. I was transported. <laughs> I was lifted up in their hands and taken out of the way. Praise God. Now that will absolutely thrill you when you start realizing that the angels have that kind of charge over you. Praise God. They will bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Verse 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample under feet. Now the term dragon and all these other terms here are talking about the devil. The devil's under my feet. I like that song, the devil's under my feet. The devil's under my feet. Glory to God. See, you've got to realize the devil's under your feet. you got to realize you're the one with authority. you got to realize the Word of God is there to be your shield, your buckler, your protector, the sword of the Spirit, your offensive and defensive weapon. Whew, glory to God. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon, thou shalt trample under feet, verse 13, verse 14. Because he hath it set his love upon me, glory to God, therefore will I deliver him. This is God speaking about you. I'm talking to you. Therefore will I deliver you. I will set you on high because you have known my name. Praise God. Put it that way. Make it personal. He shall call upon me, the Lord says, when we call upon him, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Woo, glory to God. We have long life and we have salvation. You know what the term salvation means? The term salvation is to be saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole spirit, soul, body, financially and socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. Now that will get your motor going. You are delivered, you are protected, you are made whole, you are healed, you are supernaturally surrounded by the protection of God. The angels will bear thee up if anything happens even close to you. You won't even... It won't even come nigh you. You might see 10,000 fall at your side, but it won't come nigh you. Praise God. Get a picture of the deliverance he's talking about. Get a picture of the, uh, the authority that you have in the earth and in your life and in your family that the Word of God is promising you. You are supernaturally protected and delivered and you need to live a Psalm 91 life. Praise God. 
That's what we're calling this message today, the Psalm 91 life. Woo, praise God. That's what we have. And this, uh, this brother, this pastor, a friend of mine, named his church Psalm 91 Church. He read this and he meditated on it and he saw the authority and the power and the rights and the privileges. You know, I like, sometimes I like to use that contractual phrase, we are believers with all privileges and rights thereunto appertaining. <laughs> Amen. We are believers. We are the children of God. We have rights, privileges, authority in this earth. We need to be exercising those rights, privileges, and authority because we have, we've got it made, folks. Now, I'm not saying this stuff falls on you like ripe apples off a tree. Just like I said earlier, you have to enforce this with your words. You have to confess a Psalm 91 life. You have to say, God, I thank you for your divine protection. I thank you for the angels that are around me, surrounding me at all times. I thank you, Father, that I am blessed in everything that I put my hands to. I thank you for your supernatural healing power in my life, that Jesus bore my sicknesses and carried my diseases, and by his stripes we were healed. I thank you for that, Father, and I enforce that in my life, and I take part of that. I take hold of it. I go back to what I heard Gloria Copeland say. I tell you what, that is stuck with me. You got to seize it. You got to get serious and you got to grab a hold of these things. Not passively look at them like, well, yeah, I'm protected. Hallelujah. No, you got to seize it. You got to say, thank you, Lord, for my divine protection. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my financial prosperity. I'm saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. Whoo, hallelujah. You grab hold of that, you start confessing that, you start believing that deep from down in your spirit, and you confess it out of your mouth, and you meditate in the Word of God, and you listen to Word of Faith Radio, and all the avenues and, and, and so forth that we have for hearing the Word. I'm telling you folks, you'll never be the same. Amen. Amen. A Psalm 91 life. I like it. Praise God. Well, whew, we're out of time. We're going to have to stop right here. But I tell you what, I want you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. Our address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. And, of course, you can always write me at my email address. And I, I really encourage you, if you have questions, if you have uh, prayer requests, whatever, you go ahead and write me at Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, Dr. Bill, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. That stands for Word of Faith Ministries. That's the ministry that, that puts on this netcast and that the Lord has just seen fit to bless me with to proclaim the word of faith, to be a showcase of ministries, to train people to fulfill the word of God. That's what we're here for. I encourage you to go to our website, wofm.org. Check out our articles. Check out all the resources, our past editions of the netcast. Check all those things out. They will be a blessing to you. Remember until next time to fulfill the word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.